Hey, what's going on everybody? Commander Crane here and we are back with another Pioneer video and today we're going to be doing my 2023 Pioneer review. So all the sets have came out in Pioneer for the entire year of 2023. So we're just going to kind of go over a couple different things for Pioneer, which I'll kind of get into detail in a second here. Um, so a couple things that we're going to be going over today are reprints um, that were newly put into Pioneer. We're not going to be talking about cards like Resplendent Angel, um, nothing like that. It's mostly just going to be cards that were just put into the format that originally weren't. Um, also be talking about notable new cards um, that have made an impact on the format. We're also going to talk about um, how the metagame was at the beginning of the year and kind of talk about how it's changed a little bit as well as some new decks that enter the metagame. And then we're going to talk about some bans and then uh, just closing thoughts on how I think the metagame as a whole um, just is. So, all right, let's go and hop into it here. So, reprints. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, there was not a lot of super spicy reprints um, from this last year. So, the main ones that I put here, so I put Copperline Gorge there, but obviously I'm including all of the Fastlands. For those, for those who watched my 2023 wants for pioneer about a year ago i had talked about the fast lands and we ended up getting them which was amazing so very very happy about that and then sleight of hand is a very solid card for uh phoenix decks overall what's nice is it gets around shieldred you know you're not drawing the card you're just putting it into your hand um it's just a very very good reprint and then obviously cavern of souls that just happened in the lost caverns of ixlan was pr was definitely the well, I don't know. The fast lanes are really good, so I guess it's kind of like the second best reprint um, that entered the format. So very excited to see where Cavern of Souls is going to go. I know the set's only been out for a couple weeks, so we'll kind of see what happens, but I'm very, very excited about it overall. So next thing, obviously, we're going to be talking about um, new cards that entered the format that have made some impact on the format. Um, there's I'm not including every single card, so I know that some people will be like, oh, well, what about this card? And it's like, yes, but I'm talking about the cards that like immediately impacted the format and are seeing a lot of play as we speak right now. So obviously from a uh, new Phyrexia or Phyrexia all be one ossification, Shieldred's edict and attracts a grain unifier are very, very good cards. Ossification definitely very awesome. Um, being able to exile a creature, uh, is great. Just putting out a basic land, mostly just sees play in mono white humans. Um, but still very good nonetheless. Shielders Edict, kind of the same thing. I guess also with Shielders Edict, we can also throw in um, Go for the Throat, because Go for the Throat um, also, also entered uh, in this, which I didn't put that on here, but I kind of, you know, Black Removal Spell, it's kind of included, I guess, which I guess I have more, but I just happen to remember Go for the Throat, and I didn't put it on the list, and it's very good as well. Obviously, Attracts is fantastic. A lot of good ways to cheat it into play. Then there's like the Attracts of Neoform deck that popped up as well. Um, so Attracts has been very fantastic. Whenever there's going to be reanimation or cheating creatures, Features into play, Atraxa is definitely going to be featured in those lists going forward. And then I've got Arona. There wasn't a lot of super crazy cards from March of the Machine. These are the two that I would say were very powerful anyways. But Rona is very solid, as well as Knight Errant of Aeos. Very, very good in the Boros Convoke deck. Obviously, when you're playing like this and you're playing the Loxodon guy, uh, it's just convoking out these dudes and getting more dudes or buffing your creatures is just fantastic. I also put Pia Nalar on here. Um, the deck has kind of slowed down a little bit, but I really liked the Boros um, Pia decks that were out because obviously you play things from Exile getting value with PNLR just very very good value very very good very cool unique deck for sure definitely a big fan of the deck overall um and for some reason I put P on there twice so go ahead and ignore P I it had to have been a different card I like okay so if there was a March card I don't know what it could have been but anyway so P a twice is, you know so nice put it on here twice then I've got Picklock Prankster in Imodane's Recruiter um Picklock obviously very good in the Is It Phoenix decks and then Imodane's Recruiter obviously very good in the Boros Convokes deck Boros Convoke deck once again you know giving creatures plus some plus zero and haste not really playing it for the adventure side mostly just the other side but still a very very good card in general and then on the last slide here I have Molten Collapse um also kind of uh tying in with Bitter Triumph again kind of like go for the throat very very good removal spells that entered the format this year as well as Geological Appraiser and Quintorius Khan I guess also um uh, Trumpeting Carnosaur, kind of the new Discover combo deck that's out. Geological Praiser, obviously more in the Eldritch Evolution decks, and then Quatorius Cond is featured in the Clone deck, where it's just a combo, which that deck's very, very new. We'll kind of see what happens, and we'll be talking about that deck a little bit later on, but just wanted to throw those in there as well, as that they're definitely impacting the format as a whole. So, 
those are kind of the high impact new cards um that entered this year so this next one we're going to talk about the metagame so in january at least uh at the beginning of the year these are kind of the decks that were featured so we have rectos midrange lotus combo humans and spirits i mean they're kind of different decks but they're both aggro uh recto sacrifice mono green devotion abzan grease fang and is it phoenix um not necessarily in that order by the way just kind of just a list of just good decks that um were featured at the beginning of the year and then some new decks that have came along obviously we've got the boros convoke deck which is definitely one of the best decks in the metagame now we have gruel vehicles which got a pretty decent upgrade in my glass maze crusher as well as uh the Voldaren uh, Thrill Seeker. I did not include it on there, but that's definitely a very good card from that set as well. And then Blue White Lotus Control um, with like Strict Proctor, that kind of thing. Um, putting in your Lotus Field and then having the ability countered. Just a great card in general. And then the Discover Combo, which again, a very, very new deck overall in the metagame. Um, we'll kind of see what happens with that. Um, I would say the decks that were good at the beginning of the year are still pretty solid. Um, I feel like I see a little bit less like sacrifice and I feel like I see a little bit less Lotus combo, but I would say the decks are still very, very good. It's definitely still viable decks to play in the entire metagame as a whole. So, um, next thing I want to talk about, so ban discussion. So there were no bans in Pioneer this year, which I think was a little surprising to some people, um, I guess kind of myself included there's definitely one card i thought was going to get banned um and we'll kind of talk about other cards that are commonly talked about that people really want to see leave the format so first thing we'll talk about obviously is karn and nykthos i feel like that those are the most brought up cards in the uh in terms of you know banning so personally i think karn could probably leave the format and it would be a little bit better mono green devotion is not the best deck right now um like at least according to most people which i agree to that statement so as of right now i think it's probably okay but if karn left i i wouldn't be upset nykthos on the other hand i really like nykthos in the format in terms of you know like before the karn combo was figured out people were just playing like big genesis hydras and such with the nykthos they were not doing any like anything like super broken or busted with it like yeah nykthos makes a crazy amount of mana but you have to have a good board to do for it to be able to do anything and with the Karn combo that's in the format now, it kind of makes it a little more linear, you know, not as fun gameplay. So I, I, I'd be okay if, with Karn leaving, but I think until that deck truly starts taking over the metagame again, I don't think it's going to be banned anytime soon. Uh, Fable was definitely a card I thought was going to be banned by the end of the year, but it has not, kind of surprisingly, it did get banned in Standard, but it's still legal in Pioneer. Again, we'll kind of see what happens with this, but if the Rakdos midrange deck is kind of a bit too much and Wizards decides to do something about it, I feel like this is one of the cards that has the highest chance of getting banned. As well as Shieldred. Shieldred, I think, is... It's such a weird... It's a weird discussion, and it's a weird card. I mean, Shieldred is just... Quite frankly, it's just a really, really, really good fair card. If you don't kill Shieldred, you're just going to lose to it. Simply put, uh, it has really good stats, obviously really good static abilities. Uh, really, not enough good things I can say about Shieldred. The card is awesome. I don't think it should be banned, but it is extremely powerful. And I wanted to put it on here um, just because a lot of people want Shieldred to be banned. I just don't see it getting banned in Pioneer, but, you know, anything's possible, I suppose. And then I wanted to put on Geological Praiser and Quintorius Cond because those... Uh, cast, those discover decks are just kind of tearing up the metagame right now um i don't personally play on the arena ladder a lot uh, but i heard that that is a large part of the arena ladder right now and it's kind of just tearing things up um it's also had a lot of success on magic online i feel like there was a recent tournament too where like the two finals decks were like it was the appraiser like um eldritch revolution deck and then the quintorius con clone deck which for those who don't know with the quintorius con deck Basically, you just resolve Quintorius Cond and then discover four and hit a clone, and then you hit another clone, and then whenever you cast a spell from exile, deals two damage to each opponent and you gain two life. So you just go discover, clone, 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 and then you win the game. So I had to had to throw that in there because I I'm sure not everybody knows exactly what that card does. But but anyways, so that's those are the cards that I personally have um on the hot seat. Does that mean I think all of them are gonna get banned? No, obviously not. Just cards that I think that potentially could see some action uh, but we'll kind of see what happens on that so all right so the last thing i want to talk, talk about is my closing thoughts overall um with the pioneer metagame so i think pioneer right now you know as of november 2023 i think pioneer is in a very 
it's in a very healthy space. I think it's actually a lot healthier than it was at the beginning of the year. It felt like at the beginning of the year, it was like Rakdos and Mono Green was just like the decks to beat and nothing really seemed like they could touch it for the most part, um, which I think is less true now. I feel like Mono White Humans has picked up a lot more steam. Like obviously that deck has gotten a couple of decent upgrades recently, you know, in terms of like Ossification, uh, now Cavernous Souls. So I feel like that deck is definitely showing um, showing that it's a very good deck in the metagame overall. I feel like there's a lot more, a lot of like tier two decks, I feel like got a lot of big upgrades as well. So it's like, I'm not always seeing the same decks. Like at different tournaments, I'm seeing a lot of different decks that um, have a lot of potential to succeed. I know the Gruel Vehicles deck was doing extremely good for a little while too, like Asika's Chariot and Reckless Storm Seeker, that kind of thing. That deck was very, very powerful. It still is very strong as well. Just had to throw that in there. But overall, there's a lot of different decks you can play in the metagame. And again, there's a ton of decks I didn't even include on the actual like deck you know like the metagame breakdown kind of thing there's still a lot of decks out there that people don't play like there's like the five color bring to light decks that are still really good there's like the omnath piles which are still fantastic um so there's definitely a lot of viable decks out there in pioneer uh i still do think that rakdos and mono green are the best decks um but overall they're still not oppressive but but the big discussion right now is what's going to happen with the Discover decks, which, quite frankly, I don't know. I'm not sure what's going to happen um, with the Discover decks. So as of right now, you know, we're a couple months away from the next uh, Pro Tour, which is Pioneer. So we're not going to see anything super crazy. Um, I'm, I know that DreamHack, um, I think it's DreamHack Atlanta is coming up, or DreamHack Denver is coming up pretty soon. I don't remember if that one's Standard or Pioneer. I wish I would have kind of checked that beforehand. But we'll kind of see what happens um, as the metagame unfolds with the Cascade decks. Because I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, there's answers for it. Not really. If you're not in white or playing red for Roiling Vortex, there's really no answers. Like, once there was, like, if I'm if I'm playing Gruul Aggro and they resolve Quintorius Cond, the game's over. It's done. There's not, there's nothing that I can do unless I have like some weird, like creature in play that lets me do something largely I'm dead. So I think it's, it's certainly an argument, you know, what, you know, it's what I struggle with too, is how wizards is like, yeah, there's problems with cascade. So we're going to kind of fix it a little bit. And then they made it like arguably better. Like, Oh, the spell has to resolve, but like it, it, who can, okay. The spell resolves and then you still get to do the same thing anyway. So, um, We'll kind of see what happens. I'll definitely be following that on the channel for sure. Obviously, if there's any banned or restricted updates, I'll be sure to let everybody know on the channel here as well. I know technically there is a BNR scheduled for early December um, as like a as like a catch-all kind of thing, like just in case anything's too crazy. So we probably won't see anything that day. Um, but it is, you know, noteworthy in terms of that we could see something. So, alrighty. Well, uh, I think that's the end of the video. I think we talked about everything that I wanted to talk about. Let me know in the comment section below. What do you think about Pioneer in 2023? Was there any card that you were really hoping that would get printed? Or any card that, you know, didn't get reprinted you're hoping maybe for next year? Just let me know in the comment section below. So, I'm Commander Crane. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.